Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings and I've got a little bit different tutorial for y'all again today. I feel like I'm saying that every week, but I've kind of been trying out some different things and you saw part one of when I was setting up my printer for sublimation and now you're actually going to see me going through the sublimation process. I will go ahead and apologize in advance because I was having a lot of recording technical difficulties during this time, y'all. And I didn't want to miss anything, but I was having to resort to recording with different devices. And so it may look a little bit different. And so just kind of be patient with me. Um, and then I had to go back and record. I wanted you guys to be able to actually see how I brought my image into Inkscape and then how I sized it and how I printed it off. It's pretty basic, but I know that a lot of people don't use Inkscape or aren't familiar with it. So I wanted to make sure that I added that little step in there and then you'll actually see me working through the sublimation process so but no that i am no expert at this this is the first time i've actually ever done this but i just wanted to put this out there so you guys can kind of see me walking through the process the first time and just little things that i was learning as i was going along so by no means am i the expert this is definitely like my not my typical tutorial for y'all but i felt like it was something that i wanted to put out there just so you can see that it doesn't always go smooth the first time and I'll, we all have to learn when we're going through the process so anyway if it can be helpful to y'all i hope it will be i will link all the products that I use in the description box below. So y'all make sure you check those out as well as some discount codes. And then also join my Facebook group. I know I tell y'all that every week, but we have so much fun over there. We go live on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And we've been doing Fun Full Friday, which we actually kind of work on anything during Fridays, it seems like now. And um, then that's at 3 p.m. And all those are central time. So come on over there and then share your creations with me. I love to see what you guys create. I love hearing from y'all. I love getting your feedback of what will be helpful to y'all. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope y'all enjoy it. Okay, I'm starting in Inkscape, y'all, and this is something that you do have to have a desktop or a laptop computer for. I do most things on my iPad, but this, you actually, I'd use my laptop. So I'm gonna just open up Inkscape, and then I'm gonna go to File, and I'm gonna go to Document Properties first. And then once that opens up, it's gonna pop up a box on the right side of my screen, and it's gonna give me some things to choose. So I'm gonna go to the page size first, and I'm gonna choose US letter. For some reason, my cursor, when it was recording, is kinda of off a little bit, but you're gonna choose the eight and a half by 11, and then I wanna display the units in inches instead of millimeters. And then you're gonna go right down here to orientation, and you're gonna select landscape, versus portrait, which is what it would default to. Then I'm just gonna close this box off. You can see that it's rotated my paper here or what I'm gonna use as kind of my template. And so now I'm gonna go in and import my file that I have saved on my laptop. So I had this just saved as under the desktop. I'm gonna go to file and import, and then you just find your file wherever it is. And then I'm gonna resize it right here. I'm not even gonna move it around on my page yet. I'm basically just gonna go in these little boxes right here that you can see this, the W and the height. And then for some reason it pops off the screen when I do this y'all every time. And the little lock box that's in the center, I've already unlocked mine because I do this regularly. But if you haven't unlocked that to resize an image, just click, just kind of tap on that and it will unlock that so you can adjust each individual, the height and the width. Here we've got my image. So I'm just gonna click on the image and I'm gonna drag it down and put it right in the center of where my little template is for my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And here I'm just kind of zooming in a little bit closer. You can see it fits right in the paper and then I'm just gonna go hit print. And because in the previous tutorial, we set up our printer settings, so to default to a mirrored image and high quality and, and there were specific things, this time you don't have to go back in and change those all again. You literally just go hit print this time and it saved your printer settings. So I've got my printer set up. I've got my image printed off and I actually switched it up. I ended up doing a image that was created for me by one of my sweet Facebook group members. So I thought, let me try this and put this on a Tumblr and see how it works out. So. I've got this printed off and I'm gonna use a 20 ounce skinny straight from Craft Haven. I use all my tumblers are from Craft Haven and she has a line of sublimatable ones and they come in glossy and matte. This is a matte one and then also she has one that glows in the dark which is kind of cool. So you charge it up and it'll glow in the dark. So this is just a regular white one that I'm gonna be using today. And first of all, I'm gonna trim off these edges. So I've sized it down 
to the dimensions of the cup. For this one, I'm using 9.37 by 8.1. So I just wanna trim these edges off first. So it'll actually be the exact dimensions of the cup here as well. And so now we're gonna see how well I can cut a straight line. I always think I'll start where I think it is, and then if I have to trim off a little bit more after that, I'll do it that way. Okay. So we've got that taken care of. Now we're going to wrap it around the cup. And I wonder, do I do it? I think I like where the wording's going up. Like when you turn it up and drink, you can actually like, you would be reading it that. No, let's see. So it would be the other way. Yeah. I didn't think about that, y'all, for just a second. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much exactly the measurements that I'm gonna need here when I get this wrapped around the cup super tight. You can see this basically like gonna meet up just perfectly. Sorry, it's hard for me to show you guys. So I'm just gonna sit it down here. First of all, I'm gonna take my heat tape. So you need some heat tape. I just ordered this off of Amazon. I will have it linked in my Amazon's favorite things list for y'all. I don't think there was any specific brand that I knew about. but I'm just gonna cut a little piece off to start with and then for to start off with it. I'm gonna put that on my paper and I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a couple of longer pieces for the top and the bottom. So just while I'm cutting, I thought I would go ahead and do this. Because we're going to put a piece of across the top and the bottom. So I at least want, and then I'm going to do a couple of other pieces down the seam. So I'm just trying to get prepared, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and get my tape cut off. So just so I can make sure that it's really tight on this cup. Then I'm kind of just fold over my tape here. I've ordered a tape dispenser, y'all, but until then. Okay. So we decided we want it this way. And I'm just going to sit it down flush with the cup. And then I'm going to take a piece of my tape and I'm not going to put it on the cup yet, but I'm going to place it on the back of my paper. So when I do to get this really tight, it'll be ready for me to put down. So I'm going to stand my cup up here. This, so it's flush against the bottom of the cup or the mat here. And then you want to make sure this is so tight, y'all. You do not want any movement in this. So I'm pulling it as tight as I possibly can. And then I'm really just hoping here that my seams are gonna match up. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you just don't want any movement in this whatsoever. And so I'm just gonna pull as tight as I can here to get this just where that seam is like super perfect. So you can see I've got it taped down right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take these other few little pieces that I cut here, if I can get them up. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the top and the bottom. So I can really get that seam on there really good and tight. And actually, yeah, you just want to really make sure that that is as like as tight as you can get it on, around there. And then obviously you want to make sure that your overlap is in the same area, is, the, is on the same sheet, you know? Because when you're trying to get this as tight as you are, you want to make sure that your overlap, just hair, y'all, it's just barely, thank goodness, I guess, overlapping here for us. Same 
thing and pull as tight as I can. Okay, now I'm gonna take one of these pieces and I'm gonna put it in on the top sheet. So there's barely a little bit of overlap, but if you can see there's like, this one is the one that's kind of overlapping this one. I wanna make sure to put my tape on that piece. So when I'm pulling it, it'll be pulling in the direction that I want it to be as tight as I can get it, if that makes sense. So you obviously don't wanna be pulling away from how you're trying to get it to overlap there. Okay. And then I'm actually gonna cut this little piece right here and I'm gonna continue to use it. And just anywhere where I see that, I can get a little advantage, y'all, to put that on there. That's what I'm going to do. And y'all, I'll be honest with you, I saw some people do these with the painter's tape. Um, I'm not sure if it was just, I actually tried one. I played around with this a little bit. And I'm just doing this all around the bottom again, too, y'all. So, just right down here where I'm going to pull. You can see I'm pulling really tight on this. Um, so, I used the painter's tape, and I did not have that much luck with it. So, but it was great that it was perfect where my heat tape had gone. So, I'm actually going to, and this may be a total fail, y'all, and I may never get this tape off of here again, but I think for the purposes of me just trying to figure out, because I've got a new oven as well, too, just trying to figure out a couple little things like that to start with, I'm just going to use the heat tape. And look, Y'all, I do not say that I'm a professional at this. Obviously, y'all know I, I'm not. I've just gotten um, my printer and uh, my oven, and so I'm in the learning process. I just thought it might be beneficial for y'all if I kind of walk through this process with you as I'm learning, y'all. <laughs> so, all suggestions are welcome. I just did not have luck with the painter's tape. The transfer just wasn't as good on the one that I did. So I'm just, just decided on this one. I'm going to because I want this to I want it to turn out really good. Um, that I am going to just use my heat tape on here because those areas seem to do really well on my cut, and I think it'll just make sure that it's good and tight on there. And obviously, I know that some people use shrink wrap. There's lots of different things that people use for this. Um, so, luckily, I have spare tape right now until maybe I figure out my oven a little bit. I think my oven may have been a little bit hot. So, because we're actually going to put this in there, and I put it on 380 for the first one I did, and it was just too hot. And I, because I rotated it every two minutes as well, just to make sure that it wasn't sitting on one side too long. So, I don't know if it's just because it's a new oven or, you know, when you're not familiar with an oven, even your home oven, you kind of have to figure it out a little bit. So, this time I'm going to turn it down a little bit and I'm really going to watch it. And I think maybe the heat tape, hopefully it's going to help y'all. So, we'll see. So, I'm going to go get this finished wrapped and then... Um, and then I'll come back and put it in the oven and then I'll show y'all me put in the oven and the settings. I think I'm going to go with 360 this time and, uh, I'm going to leave it in there for eight minutes, but I'm going to rotate it every two minutes, just like I did before. I'm just going to turn down the heat a little bit. Okay. Y'all I've got, this is just a black and Decker convection oven. I'm going to turn my settings here. Not quite as high as it was last time because it seems like it was a little bit warm. So I'm going to turn it down to about 350 this time. And then I'm gonna set my timer here on about eight minutes. I'm gonna do this on my phone too, just to make sure. And I'm gonna set a timer so I'll remember to turn it around every two minutes. All right, we're back y'all. So I didn't have the heat gloves. That's another thing I should mention to y'all. Make sure you get a pair. I've got a pair coming, but they're not here yet. So if y'all follow me any length of time, y'll know I always have pot holders. Usually my cups are sitting on them. So I did use this to keep my hands protected while I was turning it. So I put it in there for seven minutes because my my little convection oven is a little bit heat hotter than normal, I think, to start with. I don't know if it's just because it's new. So I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit. So I set it on about 360 and I did it for about seven minutes and I rotated it. I set my timer for every two minutes to kind of switch it around. And then the last few minutes, I kind of just went in there and just turned it about every minute. So just making sure because I'm learning y'all in the process. So I took it off and when I, it was, it was hot, obviously when I pulled it out and I had my little heat pad here, I just put it on there, but now it's cooled off. So I've let it cool off. So moment of truth, we're going to see.
did I succeed or did I not? <laughs> so, hopefully this is gonna be great. And this was the part that I really didn't see how people did this, how they get the tape off. So I'm just gonna try to run this fine, like my, I always keep a really sharp craft knife. So I thought, okay, let me do that and just kind of start it. And surely this tape will just keep peeling off. So y'all, I'm really nervous about this because I really want this to be really good, y'all, because my sweet group member that did the design this for me and sent it to me, she was so sweet. I didn't even ask her to, y'all. She just sent it. So I'm really wanting this cup to just be beautiful. I can see already that I do have color here. So, so y'all, it's so pretty and it was so easy. I mean, so, so easy. I mean, y'all, look at this. Look how good it turned out. So you can see her little watermarks in behind the Dixie Darling, which is so fun. Like, I love this. And she said that she didn't make it seamless, but y'all, look, there's the seam right there. You can barely even tell. So I love this. I will post some pictures right after this of real pictures so you guys can see it and not in this video where I'm having to record with an alternate device here that I normally do. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And again, I wanna say thank you to Hippo for providing the paper for me to try. Um, this is the paper. I'll actually have it linked in my Amazon's favorite things list, as well as their ink that I used in my printer. I mean, the color looks great. The paper was super easy to use. I really like the fact that it's printed with their logo on one side, so I don't have to wonder which side that I need to put in the printer. So that makes it like, I need it like foolproof for me. So I don't have to worry about, okay, now which side am I going to print? Glossy or matte or whatever. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will link all the products that I use in the description box below, as well as the Craft Haven link here um, for this the sublimatable tumblers, as well as all of her tumblers. There's some discount codes that I'll include for you guys as well, for the paper, for the ink, for the tumblers. So make sure to check out those links below. I'll also include some discount codes for y'all. And if you enjoy my tutorials, then please hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss my future tutorials. And make sure you see part one where I'm actually setting up the printer if that's something that you're interested in doing. So thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon. Mm -hmm.